Hey everyone, welcome back and in this video, let's just discuss a very interesting conversation I found out between the founder of Signal app and the founder of Ethereum on Web3 impressions. The first time this founder of Signal app used Web3 and what all problems there are currently in the current state of Web3. What does it even mean to be inside Web3 world? How does it differ from Web2? And let's discuss a few things which Moxie, the founder of Signal, wrote about if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so this is a long article where first of all he introduces you about web one how web one was aimed to be decentralized and then everyone soon figured out that nobody really wants to run their own servers which is pretty much true as a user, you would see as a developer, even as a developer, you have to take some courses or something to actually learn about how to run an EC2 server, what is an AWS, what is a cloud, what is a digital ocean and so on. And a similar problem remains with building a Web3 truly decentralized app as well, because at the end of the day, what you're doing in a Web3 world is you are changing the database layer with an Ethereum layer for storage, right? Or a, a blockchain layer for storing the data in a decentralized fashion so you still need to understand how to create a server and i'll tell you why that is in this in this current situation and that is one of the most prominent problems right now with web3 so long story short this article goes into a couple of important things the first thing is that the way he mentions the the things he mentioned is that there are still a few you can say centralized players in the web3 world today Right, so Web3 aims to be decentralized, but there still are a few centralized players because of certain reasons. And if you remove these players or, you know, the way they control the flow of information in the Web3 world is pretty much scary in terms of privacy and in terms of the decentralization, which we were trying to approach with Web3, which obviously is not happening. So some of these players are OpenSea, number one, Etherscan, for example, number two, Infura, number three. Infura is also like one of the major centralized infrastructure in the Web3 world and MetaMask as well. So the problem here, which he highlights is that Web3 right now, for example, if you want to access your NFTs or something you have stored via MetaMask. MetaMask right now uses these centralized services to communicate to the decentralized blockchain. So what we are essentially doing at this point is we are using centralized services as a hop to reach the decentralized world. Now it does not mean that it is no different from a database or a traditional thing. It's just that the, the promise which decentralized world gives us is privacy and is unrestricted access. That means nobody can mediate or control anything. But here, for example, if you are uploading your NFT or anything on OpenSea and you connect your wallet via MetaMask, then MetaMask technically is communicating with OpenSea and not with Ethereum directly. Right, so if OpenSea decides that, hey, for this particular URL or for this particular instance, I don't want to return any NFT information or anything because they have just banned it for violating their terms and service, then so would any wallet like MetaMask, which is a very popular wallet, would also reflect that. Why? Because they don't communicate with the blockchain, the Ethereum layer directly. They make a hop to a server like OpenSea and the OpenSea servers then communicate with blockchain if they want to get that information. Otherwise, they would just directly respond if that information is cached. So this is a serious violation or you know a serious lack of uh, the decentralization part because it's just like that we have, for the sake of it, created an Ethereum blockchain, but all the applications, because of performance reasons and just the ease of doing business, still run on the centralized servers. If you want a truly decentralized experience, you have to set up your own servers like that, like OpenSea has done or Infura has done, to communicate with the Ethereum layers, right? The Ethereum layer, the blockchain part. So this is pretty much the essence of this article. The blog post which the founder of Signal App has written has said that Web3 world still is pretty much very much centralized and the fact that users don't even care about it and still operate like anything means that decentralization might not be something which people are actually looking for. So it's it's basically building a hypothesis and then 
you know, just laying down a few problems with the Web3 world. In no way this means that he's discouraging or doing anything for or against Web3. It's just that it seems fair to just show what the world looks right now in today's time in the Web3 landscape. Then on Twitter, the founder, the creator of Ethereum replied on a Reddit, on a subreddit thread where he explains why a lot of his concerns, the founder of Signal, concerns are valid and what they are doing for those concerns. So you can see straight off the bat what Vitalik addresses is the centralized concern in that article, no pun intended. That is why the Web3 world still appears a lot centralized, right? And that is because these servers which communicate with the blockchain layer still need to run as a complete node or as a complete blockchain node. So he lists down close to eight ways right now you can connect to a blockchain and assuming that you know Vitalik knows so much I'm assuming pretty much this is an exhaustive list of connecting to blockchains the Ethereum blockchain even right now so you can see he says that only one two seven and eight only four options out of them are feasible right now out of which you can see one is obviously using a centralized service two is again you know, a centralized service. Seven is what services like Infura do, which is running a fully verifying node. And eight is pretty much, a, you know, a special, or I think like seven is a special variant of eight where you run a node, which also participates in mining and stuff. So, I mean, obviously you cannot expect people to run seven and eight, like fully verifying node by themselves. People don't even know about web 2 servers and configuration with AWS and everything, let alone the web 3 and the blockchain programming. Well, you, I mean, you can learn about that, but general public, not so much. So what we need is some option where a device, a phone or some sort of thing directly communicates with the blockchain layer instead of hopping through a centralized service. So that is something pretty much which you can see in the third way, which says that same as two, which is like Infura, but the code also runs a light client to verify the signature on the block headers and uses some sort of stuff. So what they are saying is that sure, we will use the Infura API to get the data, but we also verify what we are getting and we cryptographically verify that. So, I mean, it probably combines the best of both worlds. That is the speed with the API, the centralized API, but the validation that it is actually coming from a decentralized source. So, and I might be wrong here, but I've not really looked into light client and how this works, but this is what pretty much it seems like uh, what Vitalik is saying. And the rest of the answer pretty much goes into why this has not happened, what cryptography is involved and so on. But the fundamental premise of this conversation was that the Web3 world right now, even right now, operates on a Web2 layer, right? And that is a centralized layer. It's, it's saying that, you know, it, the decentralized part is just there, but nobody really interacts with it directly. That's the problem. And the Web3 world promises privacy and, you know, the decentralization part and anyone can access anything. But the truth is that a lot of traffic, pretty much all the traffic right now, the flow of traffic is controlled via centralized servers. So it's pretty much, th this, this was also mentioned in Moxie's article that it's just like saying that, hey, internet is decentralized, but every single thing, every keystroke or whatever you type goes through Google's server first, they send it to internet, they get it back and they send it to your computer. So that's obviously something you would not like in a decentralized world. Similarly, it happens in current scenario as well, in OpenSea, in Infura, in MetaMask as well, but nobody really notices it and they just still keep on buying NFTs and building the decentralized projects and so on. So this is, this is what, what Alex says that the ability for mobile phones or uh, lightweight devices to just communicate somehow directly with the blockchain or indirectly instead of blindly trusting the source which they are pinging is coming. It's coming. There has been investments. There has been progress. He says that the properly authenticated decentralized blockchain world is coming and it's much closer to be here. 
So, I mean, of course, the time will tell when it happens. But if the founder says, if the creator of the Ethereum blockchain says that it's happening, then it's happening. But yeah, I mean, the other part of the Web3 world where people argue what's the exact use case of it outside of the finance domain, that's something completely else entirely. This discussion was more on the technical side of Web3 and how the current scenario looks like. And uh, yep, this is a gist of the conversation. Hopefully this was helpful. And and getting to know a little bit more about the current world of Web3 and what's happening. So yep, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more coming on the Web3 part, the decentralized part, the, you know, this interesting space is growing so much that it's sometimes it's hard to keep up, but Reddit is your friend and of course, YouTube channels like Codan. So that's all for this one. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.